Hello everyone. Thought I'd uh, give an update on status of the uh, CRP 4848. Um, have a line coming in for the power for the spindle. I have uh, coolant tubes coming in for the uh, spindle also. Uh, and because I wanted to set this up so that I could remove the spindle assembly and replace it with some other type of head, whether another milling head or a laser or plasma torch, whatever. I uh, wanted to come up with a uh, setup for that. Um, I'm looking at some quick disconnects that are designed for liquids. I'll see if I can get a hold of a couple of those. But for now, what I've actually done was I've just gotten some uh, brass compression fittings and I have the lines run in here and mounted. And then I can just uh, run the uh, hose lines up to the top of these fittings here and attach it and then I can uh, just undo them, put a cap on them, I can then remove the spindle. Another thing I'm doing is I got another four wire connector um, that I'm going to use for plugging in the uh, power for the spindle. Um, it's a panel mount so I'll be wiring to the back of the uh, panel here and of course I'll make sure it's covered up real good. Um, and then what that does is it gives me a secondary connector. Uh, this connector then will have, uh, will plug into that and the wire will come out to the connector then for the spindle. Now, <clears throat> one thing I want to review with the spindles real quick. This particular spindle um, I bought from a different supplier than what a lot of other people have been buying. This particular one actually came with a four wire plug um, and it has of course three wires for phase and one wire for ground. When I first set this up and tried everything out um, I was getting some stray current here um, it was actually 120 some volts it wasn't very high amperage but it was enough to shock you and I realized um, that it wasn't being grounded so when I opened it up I pulled uh, this cap off and I realized the number four uh, had a pole position, but it wasn't connected to anything. So, in other words, there was no ground hookup. Now, I've seen some other people that have taken this back housing off, drill a tap a hole in here, and then connect a wire to that. Uh, what I decided to do was just something a little different. Um, I went ahead and connected a wire to that pole, and then I ground a little bit of the chrome away from the surface right here uh, on the inside of the housing and it took a little bit of work but I got it soldered to the other end so now I have um, a pole for grounded to the uh, connector here and it does uh, continuity works out real well um, if you connect a ground to pole number four anywhere in the spindle once this is inserted and tightened back up uh, will secure the ground the other thing you want to consider too when you build your machine if you're using one of these Chinese spindles uh, even if you get the ground situation um, situated, uh, well, before I move on, another thing you can do is, is this assembly comes apart. You solder the wires to the back of the connector. You could bring uh, the wire for a number four pole up through, and as long as you have it exposed, and then if you clamp it into this housing uh, where the clamp around the wire goes, uh, once this connect this is connected it will give you continuity and give you ground so that's another way of doing it which is kind of what I did the first time when I was testing it uh, just to check to make sure that's what it was but you want to ground your machine um, what I'm going to do and it'll be in the back but your vertical rails uh, assemblies they went ahead and they tapped all three holes on each end so uh, there's a threaded uh, hole in the back side and what I'll do is I'll actually make a physical ground wire uh, and bring it over from one of the power inputs and I'll secure it to the back of the machine that way the whole machine is grounded and I know I've tested continuity with the spindle in the mount on the machine um, and there's continuity throughout the whole system so that's a quick easy way you want to make sure you ground uh, out the entire machine <clears throat> now another thing I did was the uh, plate that I had made up to mount the spindle, I kind of did it by hand, so it wasn't all that accurate, uh, the spindle mounts. 
um, are machined so they're fairly accurate so what I do is I went ahead and had a new plate machined up it's a three by six and of course this is three inches in from or three quarters inches in from the top and the sides and then these are inch and a half spacing um, and I tolerance it so it was plus or minus two thousandths between all the holes so it should line up real well um, and I had surface ground both sides so it's nice and flat so I updated that just to give me uh, a little bit more accuracy and, and uh, a little less stress on the spindle mount um, so getting ready to finish up the, the wiring here for the spindle I'll make up a cable here to jump between there and there and, and finish up the wiring to the back of that connector and then uh, <clears throat> plumb up the hose lines uh, to the spindle which will go to those connectors I have up there now these particular inlets uh, I believe they're like a four millimeter inside diameter and about a six millimeter outside diameter now I've seen some people that have used uh, larger diameter tubing for these and they've had trouble getting them through the compression nuts here and, and getting them pressed on what I basically have uh, purchased here it's inch size it's 3 16 ID 5 16 OD and the 5 16 OD works just perfect for these 5 16 compression fittings um, so <clears throat> that's what I'll be using on these and they go through the uh, compression nuts here real nice they don't slide on here very easy because the idea of the tubing is only 3 16 and this is six millimeters which is over two hundred thousandths um, but if you take a lighter and heat the end of the tubing a little bit it will become elastic and you can slide it on so I'll kind of review that after I get this together uh, but it seems to be uh, probably the the best uh, uh, material to use the if you're doing metric it's four millimeters by six millimeters on the outside so you need a six millimeter ID tube um, the other thing I wanted to mention is <clears throat> going to a larger diameter tubing doesn't do anything for you for flow the inputs and the outputs here like I said are only four millimeters so these are your restriction points these are your restriction points so um, the only way you get more flow is to increase your pressure and I don't know if I'd want to put a lot of pressure into this because I think there's probably just a couple o-rings inside this and I really wouldn't want to put a lot of pressure onto it so you don't really need to go to a large tube um, you know uh, like I said I have a 3 16 by 5 16 uh, OD uh, tubing which should be more sufficient uh, to give it adequate flow what I'll be using is an old uh, small pond pump that I had um, I need to clean it up of course and basically all I did was I got some uh, brass adapters and then a 5 16 coupler uh, compressing the fitting up here to run the hose so initially I'm just going to be putting this into a bucket um, with some water and some antifreeze and then I'll just run the hose line from here up to the machine and then the other hose line will just come down and drain into the bucket for now and I'll look at um, cooling needs as I go along uh, but that's how I'm going to initially do it and I'll show you uh, that whole setup once I get it all done so uh, just wanted to touch base with you on the spindle and the grounding issues um, the size tubings to use and, and how I'm going to make it uh, basically uh, a disconnect system so thanks for watching